Hey everybody, Darren Alf here from BicycleTrainPro.com. Just a warning, this video is not like my other videos that I normally publish. So if you want to skip this one, that's perfectly fine with me, no problem whatsoever. Just come back next week and watch my next video. In this video, however, I am going to show you some various clips from my recent van life bike tour across the American Southwest. You're gonna see me driving from Colorado to the state of New Mexico. And I wanted to publish this video even though it's kind of like incomplete and it's not really a bike tour like I normally do. I wanted to publish it simply because I think some of you guys might be interested in seeing what it's like in the states of Colorado and New Mexico in the United States of America. So there's a bunch of various clips kind of roughly edited together hardly edited it at all um, from my trip across Colorado and New Mexico. I've tried to title where things are and stuff, but um, if you're interested in seeing those two locations, then keep watching. Otherwise, feel free to skip this video and come back next week for the next video from Bicycle Touring Pro. Good morning, Darren Alf here from BicycleTrainPro.com. I am camped out in the desert near Bluff, Utah. Yesterday I rode my bike through Monument Valley in northern Arizona, and today I'm going to drive to Durango, Colorado. So three states and three days. Um, should be good. I don't know, it's like a three, three hour drive, I think, from here to Durango, so most of today is gonna be driving. I gotta get food and water and that kind of thing. But first of all, I gotta pack up the van, I gotta take the window coverings off, and then we will hit the road. One of the things I wanna point out is that my ability to take that solar panel off the roof and move it around makes a huge difference. My battery is now at 100% for the very first time since I left home like over a month ago, month and a half ago. So being able to pull that thing off makes a huge, huge difference. This is the charge controller that basically converts the solar into energy that I can use and it's showing me that I'm currently generating 5.72 amps and, whoops, and that the battery is now 100% charged. Check it out, we got some cows crossing the road here. Lots of cows. Woo! Don't want them, what? Look at it. some of them are out in the road here. Come on, guys. Get back over. I'm gonna try to direct these guys back into their lane. Come on. Yeehaw! Don't see that very often. A whole bunch of cows just right in the middle of the road. All right, so I just found my campsite for tonight. I am up about 9,000 feet, 9,500 feet, up in the mountains above Durango, Colorado. Uh, this is my campsite. There's a campfire pit back here. I've got my towels hanging up. I, I washed the car while I was in town. So the car is looking pretty good until I drove it on this 10 mile dirt road. Um, I've already got the solar panel up, but it's not getting much at the moment, as you can see. And yeah, this is gonna be my home for the next maybe night or two. Um, I'm hoping to get some computer work done. So I'm just gonna camp here, work for a day or two, and then go down into the city, probably do some biking around here, that sort of a thing. So this is it, this is home. There's some deer over here, three of them that I can see. See him right there? Good morning, Darren Alf here from BicycleTouringPro.com. I am in Durango, Colorado right now. Just spent last night camping out here in my van. And last night, um, I happened to call my sister on the phone. She lives here in the state of Colorado, and she basically just said, why don't you come up this weekend and hang out with her and her boyfriend? So I thought, uh, I have time, I have the flexibility, I have a van, let's do it. So I'm changing my plans today. I was planning to do some biking around here in Durango, and maybe I'll come back here, but um, I'm gonna go visit my sister instead. 
instead my mouth is cold instead um it's about a 300 mile drive so six hours or so in the car so i gotta get going but uh, i just gotta i'll show you here i got everything packed up all right so the both bikes in there all my clothes and camping gear etc over here that's trash trash pile um, there's the bikes my computer and my uh, two different lanterns that I have are plugged in here look, look at all the dirt on the ground but yeah so when I'm driving all of my electronics are charging and that's pretty much it so yeah just uh, final packing up here I gotta put the roof rack things down and then I'll be ready to go Carbondale Colorado that's where I'm going next Everywhere channel is I'm seeing audience retention of up to 75%. So what we did was instead of just saying with some high acuity, they also are really good at finding us, finding missing people, whether dead or alive. Universal life. With that, the insurance plan. You know, we absolutely want the death benefit. That's a benefit to, to the client. However, in the initial upfront analysis of whether or not you hold us on your balance sheet, it has to stand on its own two legs as an asset. So we focus on that asset portion as much as possible. The asset portion inside of these policies can be allocated to a variety of different trackers that will track the growth. Okay, so what I mean by that is there's... All right, so I just made it to Basalt, Colorado where my sister lives and she lives in this building right here and she's supposedly coming out to get me. <laughs> oh yeah, well we set our clock forward so we've been up for quite some time. Was that last night? Yeah. Oh, what time is it then? So my sister and her boyfriend live in this building that is like, the first two floors are commercial, top floor is apartment buildings. So I'm gonna do my laundry in the basement. Here we are, this is my sister, Marissa. We're gonna go on the rim trail up about a mile and a half to the overlook. And, uh, and hope, it's kind of snowing. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't snow too much on us. Here we go. All right, so I just spent the last two days here in Basalt, Colorado, forgot where I was, uh, with my sister and her boyfriend. And now I'm all packed up. Um, spent the last two nights sleeping in the parking lot here in the van. And I am going to drive to a town called Buena Vista, Colorado. It's about, I think it's like 300 miles away or something. Maybe not, I don't know. It's a three or four hour drive, I think. So that's the plan today is drive there and then Buena Vista. I'm hoping that I can stay there for a couple days, um, get some work done and do some biking as well. So I was planning to stay here in this area, Aspen, Colorado is right up the road, but it's so cold um, and it's, it's gonna, the weather report said it was gonna snow tomorrow. So I just don't wanna be around here right now. So I'm gonna try to get out of the mountains today before it snows. It's kind of raining and snowing a little bit, even now. But um, yeah, that's the plan, is to go to Buena Vista, Colorado. It's a, it's a driving day.
Good morning, Darren Alf here from BicycleTrainPro.com. I just spent the night camped out in the desert outside of Taos, New Mexico. And today at 6.30 in the evening, there's a bike packing presentation in Santa Fe at a bike shop there that I think I'd like to go to. Um, so I'm gonna pack up everything in the van right now, pack up my bikes and drive towards Santa Fe. The problem is I got a problem with my tire. I had to, I took the tire off um, and put on the spare tire. So I have a spare tire, but I can't really drive on that tire normally. So I need to go to a, a tire shop, get two new front tires, I think at the very least, and then go to Santa Fe and hopefully get there in time for this presentation later tonight. So that's what's going on. Woo, it's getting foggy. Okay, so driving back out onto the dirt road here and I have about a quarter mile to drive, half a mile on this dirt road down to the main road and then on to Santa Fe. I have to go, the first town that I'm going to is called Espinola, I think, something like that. And that's where I need to get my tire fixed. Um, there's three tire stores there, so hopefully one of them has a tire for me that I can use. But uh, right now I'm driving on the spare tire and I gotta be pretty careful, I think. Um, it's not the same thing as a regular tire, so I gotta drive pretty slow on the highway once I get out there. Uh, maybe drive with my emergency flashers on or something. But it's about 36 miles, so it's a pretty good drive. on this group ride in Santa Fe right now. I forgot how fast these road riders go. They're going twice the speed, three times the speed of what I normally do on my bike tours. So I'm getting dropped like crazy. There's only a few people behind me. Ugh, oh, tired.
like I'm about to stab someone. <laughs> go around the back too. Oh. You can go on both sides. It's double buffet style. <laughs> All right, do it. Do it. It is a. It is a problem. We didn't make it super gourmet. Yep. But we just did what we could. Enjoy. Enjoy. It looks pretty gourmet to me. Yeah, I mean we're. You underestimate who you're cooking for. Or overestimate. That was a neat place. A little junkyard of old trucks and everything from the army and I don't know, old mining equipment probably. Pretty cool. Good morning, Darren Alf here from BicycleTouringPro.com. I just spent a cold night sleeping in my van here in Cuba, New Mexico. And today I'm going to drive from here for about an hour and a half to nearby Chaco Canyon. Um, it's a pretty cool place. Hopefully I can get there because the dirt roads going into the place are supposedly really, really bad. Um, it looks like it could snow or rain at any moment. I did actually see a few little flakes falling a moment ago so I got to get out of here because if it starts to rain this road is going to turn to mud and I'm going to get stuck. So uh, first step drive about two miles on this dirt road out to the paved road then head northwest towards Chaco Canyon. <laughs> 